Praise the Lord, face and my brothers and sisters on Bible class. Welcome to Bible class one more time. It's a blessing to have you, amen, share with us again. Last week we're not on and um, we're deeply um, disappointed we couldn't come on last week. However, here we are this week. I apologize for not being here last week. But we give God thanks for his redeeming love and his mercies. And so here we are today, tonight, as we share together with you in Bible class. You know, I always look, I anxiously look forward to every week this time when we can go through the words of God and share with you from the word of God. And I pray that as you come on this evening, that God's blessings will be upon you. I pray that unction be given to me as I endeavor to uh, share the word of God with you. Invite your friends, tell your neighbors, amen, tell your co-workers, praise God. Bible class is on and they're going to share a beautiful topic this evening. Man, you're going to be blessed. You cannot afford to miss. Come on, let us have a bumper crowd, amen, sharing with Bible class as we go into a very, very intriguing topic. Very intriguing topic. Amen. And as always, remind you, the songs we play, we do not have the copyright for these songs, but we endeavor to use them as a means of um, worship and praise to the Lord. Thank you to all our artists that have made yourself available that God can use you and we in turn can reproduce what you have produced in the studio. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Almighty God, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercies. <clears throat> thank you for spirit life. And Heavenly Father, as we come before you this evening, Lord, oh, we are empty, broken. You are strong. Hallelujah. Bless our efforts. Speak to our hearts, Lord. Speak to my heart. Anoint me, Lord, with your awesome, powerful anointing. That your words will come through with power. <clears throat> your words will come through, Lord God, with oh unction. And that your people are blessed. Hear me now. I pray, but I tell you thanks. Hallelujah. To the hearers, Lord. Hope they're understanding to understand your words. In Jesus' name we pray and say thanks. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, my brothers and sisters, this evening, the topic we look at today, amen, a very, very intriguing topic, as we share with you those unsung heroes. Those unsung heroes. In other words, those heroes, well, that sometimes nobody remembers them, <laughs> nobody recalls their name. An occasion when they had to um, refer to them but we're gonna talk this evening about those unsung eras and so thank you sister CC amen for sharing with us amen as we talk right now about those unsung heroes and so <clears throat> I invite you to turn it me in the Bibles to Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through to 10 it says be not deceived God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, shall the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, shall the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. For in due seasons we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially who are of the household of faith. Praise God. We're going to talk this evening about some unsung heroes. Have you ever stopped to wonder why or to wonder how many disciples did Jesus call initially? Somebody said, come on. He called 12 disciples. But question. <clears throat> Can you name all of them? <laughs> That's it now. You see, 
there were at least three of them that quickly jumped to your mind. Who are those three? Anybody can type fast enough? Oh, as you talk about Jesus' disciples, those three people just jump to your mind. And, and I'm almost certain somebody said, oh, that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. I can tell you the names without even blinking an, an, an eyelash. You know, but <clears throat> you see, while you're quickly typing those names on the on, online, how come these names just jump out at you that quickly? How come these names, those three names of, you know, um, those disciples that everybody knew about? How come? Truth is, that's it. Peter, somebody said Paul, but Paul was not one of the initial disciples. No, not one of the new disciples that he called. Not one of those he called initially. Peter, James, and John. You have it. Somebody says Simon. Same guy. Simon and Jesus called for surname Jesus, Peter. So, why do you mention their name so easily? Why? They were up front. Lady the Marine. They were the ones who were always close to Jesus. His close confidence. <laughs> As a matter of fact, before you see Jesus, you see Peter, you see James, you see John. Always present. And somebody says, you know what? These guys were more than just disciples. They were friends of Jesus. But can I tell you, reality is that Jesus had nine more disciples. And somebody said they were the inner circle. <clears throat> and those are the names we call them, you know. Um, they were pretty close. If Jesus was to make a mistake, they saw first. When he was changed on the Mount of Transfiguration, they saw first. When he went into the house uh, to, to raise um, Simon, um, Simon's, was it wife or mother? They were there. But reality is, there were nine others who were always outside. And of the nine, if I should ask you to type the nine, which I won't trouble you tonight, you're going to struggle to find all of those names. And somebody dive in for the Bible now to say, by the way, who are the other nine? I can't remember Thomas. I can't remember. There was Andrew. There was Philip. Not the deacon Philip, but Philip. There was Bar 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 Bartholomew. Bartholomew. And somebody, his other name was the same name as Nathaniel. Same with Daniel was Bartholomew. There was Matthew. There was Thomas. There was James, the son of Alphaeus. And his brother, um, John. There was, there was Thaddeus. Or Jude. Or somebody called, who was the son of James. There was um, Simon. And this one was um, the, the, the Canaanian. And of course, who could forget of these people? There was Judas Iscariot, the other nine. You know, of these other disciples, what made you rem would remember even Judas in a special way? What would make you remember Matthew in a special way? Truth is, Matthew, he wrote the book of St. Matthew. Somebody said, <coughs> well, it's easy to remember him because he wrote a book. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, well, their mother was just a little too brave. <laughs> she was a mom who came to Jesus and said, um, you know what? We're not going back to heaven. We're not going back to paradise. Put my boy James and John, one on your right, one on your left. I could almost tell her who to put right and left. But guess what? You choose. And so, but the question is, when mama went to Jesus, how many people remember that, that that's in the Bible? How, how many people remember that? Very few. You have to be a Bible scholar or, you know, you might have just read it a few days ago. But I didn't anybody remember that your mother went to Jesus and said, put one on your left, one on your right. But here comes now the betrayal of Jesus Christ. 
the man who sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. For this man, he was so famous <coughs> that some people prefer to remember him by his character, by his action, and they might not even choose to remember his name. Matter of fact, for those who care to know, is Judas, his character. Some people don't do, they don't want to call his name because, oh, you must sell out Jesus. You couldn't do that, brother man. He walk with you every day. He trusts you to give you the, to make your carry the collection in the bag. And you, you sell him. But Judas is remembered <clears throat> for a particular thing. So, the Lord was speaking to me on this topic. You know, I always get my greatest inspiration when I choose to wash my vehicle. Sometimes I really don't have no time. Two weeks will pass and, and I can't get a chance. I can't go to the wash stand and it don't wash up. But, you know, I get up and I say, no, I can't drive a dirty car anymore. Let me wash it. And that's when I get my greatest inspiration. It was in washing that vehicle that the Lord spoke to me and he said, those unsung heroes, people remember you for either something that you did outstandingly good or something that you did outstandingly bad. People remember the excellent thing you did, good. And they'll remember the, the atrocious thing you did. Bad. But if you are an in-between, you stand a chance of getting lost in the crowd. If you're not outstanding the good, or outstanding the bad, you stand a chance of getting lost in the crowd. Watch this. Jamaica had a 4 by one side that beat the world, world record. We remember, you might remember Mr. Carter because he always start. The guy who on the second leg, what is his name again? <laughs> when name again? Free, free, turf. Michael Freighter. How many people remember Michael Freighter? Listen to me. The best second leg runner the world has ever seen for about 10 years straight. Nobody has ever substituted Michael Freighter on the second leg. I cannot even recall if he was injured once. I cannot recall a bad baton chain between Freighter and Nesta Carter. The truth is the third leg runner was either um, Ewan Blake, Bolt ran the third leg one at a time. Remember he ran and he ran to has give suffer the first run, suffer, run, run. And when the race was finished, Bolt, Bolt finished almost the same time with suffer can run down the straight with suffer. Or your, your sweet suffer, put him at turn and bolt in. So you know the first man is going to be Carter. You know the third man is going to be one of the big giants. You know, either Blake or, um, or Bolt or, 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 or Safa. But the second leg runner was an unsung hero. But he held his own. With all the gold medals everybody get, he got his gold medals too. Because unsung, but dependable. I come into that in my Bible class tonight. I want to, I want to focus on these unsung heroes. These in-between disciples who was not called to the inner circle. <clears throat> Neither were they betraying Jesus. They were just on the team. And I, I've never heard anybody mention Bartholomew. 
must Philip never at his calling. Philip. Until Matthew wrote the book, nobody remember him. And he was a task collector. I want to talk to the in-between persons. You are the ones that have to be called. Because your motivation comes not from the fact that you are called to the mountain with Jesus. Not because you are called to the um to come in at the um the, 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 the healing session with Jesus. Your motivation will not come from an external source. Because hardly anybody remember that you are a member of the Usher department. Never call a name. But you are so reliable that any day you don't come, the department feel it, but nobody remembers you. You are a member of the choir. You sit down at the back row. But when you don't come, they might, they at the front row, might not even notice that you are not at the back row. But the guys in the back row will miss you for some, maybe just the fact that you're a deer. I want to talk to you. Because many of you are in church. Many of you are in the workplace. Many of you are in the army. <clears throat> many of you are in the taxi association. Couple of you are on the, on the, on the, um, the list of surgeons. Many of you are good sales representatives in your branch. But nobody, your face has never gone on the board. But you're steady. You have never won the agent of the year, but you're steady. I want to talk to you. Because your motivation will not come from without. It will come. You will remain a member of the team. Because you are focused on your mission. You are focused on your purpose. You are laser guided on your goal. And your vision bigger than a breadfruit. You. If, if they clap you. You're good. If they don't clap you, you're good. If they big you up, you're good. That's another day at work. If they don't big you up, you're good. Because you never go there, you know, for the clap, 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 clap. If you get it, you take it and you thank God for it. But if you don't get it, you don't dang up your mouth and say you're not coming back. Or, you know, I am not going to be a part of this anymore because nobody sees me. You are not driven. By what I say about you. You are driven because of what you, 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 within you is saying about you. I am, listen, people like you, in the rain, you are there. <laughs> in, the, in, in, the, in the snow, you are there. When everybody else is, is sick and stay home, you sick and come to work. Because you're not driven by the paycheck, nor the clap. You are driven by a sense of purpose, goal, mission driven, vision oriented, goal oriented. And your boss might never have ever asked you to do anything with him or her. So that your picture can be taken. Yet you have been there for the past 30 years. Holding your side of the bargain. Nobody remembers you. I, I came here this evening to talk to you. You are an unsung hero. But guess what? You are as important. And maybe even more important. Than a guy who is called. To the podium. You know why? You know within yourself that if nobody calls you, you'll still be there. 
you know that if recommendation should be asked for, you might never be recommended by them. But your faithfulness will cause you to be put to the front of the line. You know why? Because when all is said and done for you, more is said. For some people, more is said than done. But for you, more is said. More is done. Because your, your, your motivation comes from within. I want to share with you this evening, Unsung Heroes. You know, the question is, you know why you were called. Why were the disciples called? Peter, James, John, Bartholomew, Andrew, Philip, Matthew, Thaddeus, your name. Why were they called? Jesus was looking for some men with capacity to become teachers like him. Matter of fact, one at the time they said to Jesus, Master, you speak to us in parables, to them in parables, but to us, you start to explain. Jesus said, listen, I speak to them in parables for them to go work it out. But you see, you, I'm teaching you to teach. I'm, I'm tra training you <clears throat> to be a moderator. I'm training you that when I go back home, oh, glory to God, to be in heaven, you will stay right here on earth and make disciples like yourselves of men and women. That's why I called you. Some of them are called dramatically. <laughs> Jesus went to the seaside and he saw Peter and his brother James and the other one. And he said, Hey guys, go back out and cross the net on the other side. And Peter, who is always talking, said, Master, what are you talking about? We have been here all night and we catch nothing. What are you talking about? You, you, you know more than what? Jesus said, cast it out there, the church out there. Peter said, depart from you, you know what? Leave us alone. Jesus said, no man. You see this? Ship lo boat load of fish you catch here. I'm going to make your fishers not of them fish there, but of men. I'm going to teach you how to become great apostles because you have been with me. I'm going to teach you how to win men and women to me. So much so the first message Peter the fisherman preached over 3,000 souls were baptized that is a big revival you know Jesus said to them without even convincing them walk away from that and come in they said master we're coming they left the boat they left the fish and gone to Jesus others might have had less sensational conversions or they might have set themselves apart from the rest of the followers of Jesus by displaying maybe faith inside something. I know he went to Matthew at the seat of the collection. I said, Boy, leave that and come. <laughs> Matthew, get up, left it and come. Ah, Lord Jesus. When he saw Bartholomew and he said, Yeah, there goes that, there goes that Israelite without any, any blemish. But I said, Where you know me from? He said, Man, remember sitting under the tree there, I saw you, boy. You're a guy without any guile. Not unless say, who are you? I thought you came from Nazareth. But you sound like a prophet. You read me up. Jesus said, come. Let me help you to read up other people. Not I got up and the rest is history. Became a part of, the, of, of, of Jesus' you know, disciples. You see, unsung heroes will have to keep remembering how God called you. How were you called? That is your motivation. Because it is not going to come from, we call it intrinsic. Some part of your character, you know, it's a part of you now. Just to do well. And when Jesus calls you, you say, man, I get a call. I'm not going to drop this one. You know, you could be <clears throat> in an environment where you are not recognized publicly although you are called watch this 
when you're not called to the scene of the resurrection of the dead, like Peter and John were called and James, you must first remember unsung hero, people of God that feel that nobody's seen you. Hallelujah. Never forget that the, 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 the mere fact that you are with Jesus meant that you were called. You, you were called in the first place. You know, um, many people come to the workplace and after a few months I look around and I say, but nobody in this place that recognizes me. My friend, don't wait for the recognition. Do your work. Work hard. Because remember, at the interview for your job, there were many people there, but the, the company chose you. Why did they choose you? Because something about you said to the company, take a chance with this one. And thank God you were called. I challenge my unsung heroes, therefore. Remember, the word of God says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season, if we, we shall reap if we faint not. So, let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I'm talking to you this evening and I'm calling you to book. I'm calling you to a relationship with Jesus which said. My relationship is not built on what people do for or say about me. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the weakest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. Why? Because I am a middle order batsman. I'm a number two runner on the relay leg. But on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. I have come to learn, brothers and sisters, that the, the, the mouth that call you great and powerful is the same mouth next week when call you worthless and no good. Watch this. In Jamaica, we have a team called the Reggae Girls. Last month, was it? They were at the um, at the World Cup. Beating up sides. I think it's two goals scored on them. Overall, a three. But today, the same side, the Federation, fired them. It's all I stay. Last month. This month. Away with you. Away with you. Get off a team. But I want to challenge you. To remind you. That your chief motivation. Must be hinged and, and cemented in your mind. That you are here. Not for the no. But for the reaping season. The reaping season. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, many of us get caught up in the cut and thrust. In the push and pull. In the brag and boast. In the, in the back slapping and the, and the hand thumping and the this and that. And forgetting... That the guy who slapped your back will not be rewarding you with heaven. See, you know. The guy who say, hooray, 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 will not meet at the pearly gate. And stop the foolishness. Saint Peter have no time to wait for you at the pearly gate. Him gone inside, gone take care of his mansion. Make sure that you... <laughs> make sure you have your... Make sure that you have your mansion. Yes, because at the end of the day, what's important, my brother, my sister, 
is not who clap you down here. But God of glory will reward you up there. As in the scripture I read this evening, Galatians 6 verse 7 to 10. And our theme is those unsung heroes. We are paying attention to those heroes. Who... They might not be given the accolades of their friends and your colleagues. They might not be given the, 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 the forward like we're saying Jamaica. But they are coming to understand that what's important for them is not whether they are called to be a part of the inner circle. It's not whether they are left behind out of the inner circle. Is the fact that they are working to reap a new season. Hallelujah. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 7 to 9. He said, you know what? I wasn't even called to go out of 12, you know. Paul said, I am the least of the apostles. Why? I am not even worthy to be called an apostle. Why? Because I persecuted the church of God. So Paul was even worse than Bartali, man, guys. Because at least they called and sat at the feet of Jesus. Went down into the mountain. Was a part of the Bible class up there. When he sat and taught them. Paul was nowhere near there. At that time, Paul was at the feet of Gamaliel. Learning Levitical law and, and so forth. But Paul says, you know what? Paul said, but by the grace of God. I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Paul said, I get a call late that I must come to the match. Just a baby God, no? When God not got a chance to play against Colombia, it was because Mr. Messam was sick. And Mr. Messam had the worst sick of his life. Because by virtue of him being sick at that match, baby take him game. Never get called. I can't recall him. Get called again. Because Bibi was a better man now. Watch this. Paul says, I am the least of the apostles. I am not worthy me to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But Paul said, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Hallelujah. And his grace, which was bestowed, in other words, in Jamaica, when they say, Dash it on you. <laughs> his grace, I want to say, his great was which was put on you was not in vain, Paul says. But I labored more abundantly than all of them, than they all. Why? Not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So Paul is saying, I never get called to the mountain, never get called to the healing session, but you know what? I work harder than all of them. Why? I am working on the basis of the grace of God. And the grace of God says, if I was to look at your past, you could not come near me. Hallelujah. If I was to look at your past, you couldn't lift your hand, but you lift holy hands and praising the Lord. But I am giving you, Mashanda, my grace. Why? Because of my God says that you deserve some grace. Oh, glory to God. Paul was driven by mission. You know, someone said, get, get, get a chance, baby. Baby said, I get a chance and I'm making use of it. Mm -hmm. Many times, if, if, if you were in a group of four, better yet, if you're in a group of one, you plus the chooser, and it's something should come up and say, we need somebody to go lift up that box. The chooser, the person choosing, would turn to you and say, go look outside if you see anybody from you know, to lift up this box. You know why? Even if you and them alone, they, they're just not asking you. And you say, so what have I done so that nobody don't see me? Watch it. It's two of us in here. It's one box. And you mean him could have said to me, lift it up for me? No, he said, go look outside. <laughs> you see anybody out there for me. Because you, have, you are never, the, listen, you never come to their mind to be chosen. But Paul says, 
you know what? Left to them, I would not be chosen because I was a persecutor of the church. They, they, they are afraid of me. They hate me. And some want to kill me. So much so that when I went to Jerusalem, Paul said, among the disciples, they decided that the, 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 the persecutor is here. Let us kill him. They had to let down Paul in a basket over the wall. They said, run away. He had to go to the desert of Arabia for 14 years and couldn't come back to Jerusalem. Because if they catch him, they kill him. Because they remembered that he was the one who, who supervised the death of Stephen, Deacon Stephen. And he was the one who supervised the imprisonment of many people. And was on his way to Damascus, armed with a letter from the chief priest to arrest more people when Jesus met him. So Paul was the last man to be called, to be asked to be a part of the prayer meeting. A prayer meeting with Paul meant they would pray like this. One eye closed, one eye open. Just in case him coming to lock them up, they could run. They wouldn't trust him. But Paul says, I am what I am. Why? The grace which was bestowed upon me. Mid-Lord of Batsman, people of God who are in the church, that you are not being called as you expected, don't ever forget that the first thing happened was that Jesus called you. You repented, you baptized, you got the Holy Ghost. You're in church. Why? Because Jesus called you. Man might never see your worth as your worth should be seen. But thank God he saw your soul despite your character. That's the God we serve. Friends, in Romans chapter 8 verse 36, Paul got very philosophical and very emotional and he, he, he went into a zone where you have to understand where he's at tell your friends about my my bible class tonight my friends um we are on youtube under my name you can go to youtube afterwards we upload it to youtube to see it and to share it so subscribe share um and of course you, I ask you to also, um, 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 you know, give me a like. Let me know what's happening. Give a comment. Comment. So we can know if we're making sense. All right? Paul says, who? Romans 8 verse 26 or 39. So I'm a mid-order batsman. Mid all right? Okay. I'm, I'm in the church. Okay. I'm in the, in the department. And they're not calling on me anyway. They're not promoting me. But watch this. Who shall separate me from this company? <laughs> Who shall separate me from this church? Who shall push me out of this church? Who shall cause me to become so disappointed that I'm going to leave God? Paul said, Who shall separate me from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He said, as it is written, for thy sake were we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep as a slaughter. Paul said, nay, in all these things, the hating and the biting the gossiping, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Somebody type hallelujah in the chat. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Because our victory is not based on your liking me. People hate you for various reasons. They don't like your glasses. They don't like your school ago. They don't like your nose or your shape. They don't like your ears. You're white, you're black, you're blue, you're pearl, you're that, you're this or that. They don't like your suit. But Paul says, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Type one more hallelujah in the chat. Paul said, for I am persuaded. He's making a decision now that though he might be considered a number two runner on the relay leg. And you, you never remember so many Michael Freighter. Though you might not even remember that I am an integral part of the usher board or the choir ministry or the ministry of ministry. They might never call me to preach or to exhort. Paul said, 
I am persuaded that neither death, nor height, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. I don't know what's coming. Nothing, nor height, nor depth, that throw Joseph in the pit and thought that was the end of him. But Joseph said, you know, boys, you know why you don't know you don't throw me down here? Because he knew I had to reach Egypt. And the way to Egypt was the way through the pit. I was a prophet in training. I'm down here now. Good thing I'm down here. So call daddy and tell him, come down here. And if we put him in the land of Goshen, still what they are multiplying. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Make that decision. No height, no depth. No creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. No sickness, Lady Marie. No, no, no setback, oh glory. No financial punch shall knock the wind out of you that cause you to ever lose confidence in God. I am an unsung hero, but I am a hero. I, <laughs> nobody has ever, but God in heaven is saying, I'm going to give you more grace. You know why? Because God says, I can trust you. And God will never bless you. Bless you if he can't trust you. Oh, hallelujah. He's such a, you know, he's, he's such a dependable God. He's such a, he's such a faithful God. That when man hold you back, he has a way sometimes to lift you up over them head and put you right up front. And even you asking yourself the question, how did I reach here? Just don't spend the time walking around. Who favored you? Just go and give God thanks. And do the work for which you were called. A lot of time we spend walking around looking for people to clap us and say, Wow, you made it, man. Hello. You never come here for the applause. You come here for the hard work. Start working and do the will of him who sent you here that he can in due course reward you in due season if you faith not. My brothers, when you are driven by mission, here's Philippians 3 verse 13 to 14. The apostle said, Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended but this one thing I do, you know, unsung heroes, forgetting those things which are behind. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praying for you, Sister Benisha, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray about this evening that God will inspire you with this word. Hallelujah. That God will help you to understand that the mere fact that you are called, you're a hero. No. Clap, clap. But you're a hero. You're still holding on to Jesus. I pray over you, my sister, in the name of Jesus. Listen to this. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. Paul said, here's my job now. The apostle said, here's my job now. I press toward the mark. That's what I came here to do, to press. I have no time to be taken up with you again over um, your, your frivolities, you know. I have no time to be caught up with your um, innuendos and your um, suppositions. And your, Listen, I am pressing. So I press toward the mark. What? For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. As a mission-minded person, I will not forget the cash. What is the cash? K-A-S-H. What is that? The K means I will not forget 
that I need the knowledge of God. Paul said that I might know him. That's what we need. The knowledge of God. The K. The A. I need the attitude of a fighter. Distractions there are. But I press toward the mark. I'm being distracted by your chatter. But I can't be consumed by your chatter. When young Simpson met um, Mar uh, Marion Jones on the second leg of a four by one, Marion Jones said to her, you are the one that sent to run this leg with me? Young Simpson said, yes, and I shall beat you, which you did. We had got the attitude of a fighter. Distractions there are, but I press toward the mark. The S stands for skills. So I will come to Bible class because I'm building up my competence. I am studying to show myself approved by God. Somebody say approved unto God, but approved by God. Why? Because I know and understand and can teach the word. My S in my cash. And the H. I'm going to build the habit of a champion in Christ. The habit of a champion. In that the ultimate achievement for me and for you is going to be a winner of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. The cash, the cash, the cash, the K again, the knowledge of God, the A, the attitude of a fighter, this S, the skill with the word of God. And the H, the habit of a champion. And a champion is always pushing to win. A champion has no time, no time to be caught up with the penny section. And the section that always seeking, if you don't clap, if you don't come back to church. Hey, yeah, if you don't big them up, then I have no time for God. But you will say to yourself, Hallelujah, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only lean on Jesus' name. Why? Because on Christ, the solid rock I stand. I know that all of the ground is sinking sand. My brothers and sisters, when driven by mission, you're always on the prowl, pushing, pressing, working, studying, seeking God, praying, fasting, helping out somebody, helping somebody, being there for somebody, advancing the will of God. Because you know what? I'm looking for my reward. You're looking for what? Your reward. Here's the apostle speaking again in Galatians 6. Verse 78. The apostle said, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The apostle said, If you sow to the flesh, you shall have the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit, shall have the spirit reap everlasting life. A young ruler came to Jesus and said, What must I do to be saved? Jesus said, Keep the commandments. Do this to him. said, Listen now, Jesus. From my boy, I keep the command. I'm doing well. I'm doing very good. Jesus said, all right. Sell what you have and give to the poor. The guy left vexed because he had a lot. In other words, to him, to him, he was willing to sow, but he was willing to sow ego and self-esteem and self-righteousness, but not willing to sow love to his neighbor. Jesus saw that and decided, you know what? Go sell, man. Share some of what you have with those less fortunate. He left vexed because the Bible said he had a lot. You know, I want to tell you this. That although these heroes of the, the apostles, um, Bartholomew, Andrew, Philip, um, 
We heard that Peter was crucified upside down. John was exiled to the Isle of Patmos. Matter of fact, they took him off and put him in a hot bucket of oil and harness stone. Man, it could have burnt, it could have melted out. Know? But God, you know, somehow miraculously kept him. He was persecuted. James was persecuted. What happened to those guys in the second line? Did God find them worthy to suffer for him? Oh yes, oh yes. Andrew was crucified. Bartholomew and Nathaniel was skinned, then he was beheaded. Thomas was killed when they pierced him through with a sword. So therefore, the list goes on. The list goes on. Because I want to let you know that when you are called of God, He spears you no honor. He doesn't spear, listen, He throws His honor upon you. He, 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 he bestows His blessings upon you. Because I've got to understand, my brothers and my sisters, that God is not partial. Your leader might just don't like you. Your leader might just don't rate you. He thought or she thought you should be more successful than you are. So they think you're just a waste. But they don't know the call of God on your life. They can't understand it. Because they are judging you based on them. Oh, they have all of the hurts wealth and all of the hurts accolades and good for them. But for you, your call is a different one. Different one. Glory to God. And so, and so, and so the Lord inspired me this evening to talk to you, the unsung hero who fell at your zero. You're not zero. You are blessed and highly favored. You are called to the kingdom for such a time as this. God has highly favored you. Hilo Moshanda. God has anointed you. Hilo Moshanda. God has placed you. God has positioned you, my sister. Hilo Moshanda. And nothing shall separate you from the man of from the from the, the love of God. Neither rejection, nor separation, nor hate, nor gossip shall separate you from the love of God. Watch this. Some people just don't feel that you're in their class because you don't live where they live, you don't drive what they drive, you don't own what they own, so they just don't rate you. If you give an advice, they're not taking your advice. They're taking the advice of the guy who is as successful like them in this earth's wealth. But they don't stop to understand that God has given to you a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, the gift of faith, healing, the gift of discerning of spirit. God has highly favored you and position you. Listen, the, the man in the flesh will never understand the call of God over your life. Elo Musha. Even you sometimes can't understand why is it that I'm not as successful as the other guys? Because they're not half as bright as me. <clears throat> if I have to speak personally as, 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 as a professional all my life, and as someone who has excelled professionally, but not as financially as a lot of my colleagues. And, you know, I used to walk and wonder what is happening. And if you're not careful, you, 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 you put your mind to a level to say, maybe somebody is um, holding you back. But let me tell you, whatever you pray for, you get. I always pray for Proverbs 22, verse 1. 
Lord, give me, a, give me a good character. Give me a good name. Never prayed for money. And God gave me name and character. Thank you, Jesus. These days now, I say, Lord, well, the guy is getting a little older. His hair is a little gray. Um, he needs to retire with a little financial comfort. So I've been praying now, I say, Lord, give me some money now. Um, because I need to be a little more comfortable, relaxing my mind, going into retirement. And as I begin to pray for it, I see God just turning some things. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just put a little money my way. I mean, I tell you, I'm rich. But God is just put a little, you know, some contracts here and some appointments there and some engagements there and and people are you know and i'm saying to myself god maybe i should have begin to pray for this <laughs> so for a long time he said no no don't envy people for what they have a closing second timothy 4 verse 6 to 8 paul says for i am not ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand paul said I have fought a good fight. Dry up the tears, my sister. God is speaking to you tonight. You are blessed. Praise God with me now. Paul says, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. God bless the daily part. Paul says, henceforth, hallelujah, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, Shall give me that day. Listen to the man of God. Unsung heroes. Paul put in this little part for you. Paul says. Not to me only. But unto all those. That love is appearing. To you sister Benisha. God says. There's a crown of life. <laughs> for you. Stay humble in God. Don't be wearing well doing. For you shall reap if you faint not. Greater is ahead of you. Weeping may endure for the night. But your joy is coming in the morning. So here somebody said, Hold on, my child. Joy cometh in the morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this inspirational word. It blessed me as I sought to bless others. Let your word multiply, replenish, and fill the souls of men. Let the word be fruitful, Lord, and multiply and replenish the earth. Replenish the mind of your people. Let some people tonight get up, Lord, and realize. Not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. Have you all way tonight? We tell you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, 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 well. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Brother Chris. I'm on YouTube. I'm going to upload this video as soon as I are through here. Share it with your friends. Just send it around some groups. Let people be encouraged. It's not about Bishop. It's about God through me. Like Paul, I want to say, I thank God for his grace. <laughs> because I do nothing by myself. It's all because of the grace of God. Left to me alone, I'll be a loser. I'll be a failure. I'll be smoking weed and drinking dope. And, and us are done. You know, booze. But thank God, He saved me in time. And I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Washed in His fountain. Cleansed by His. I'm happy I'm a Christian. I love being a Christian. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. See you again, God's willing, next week. Same place, same time. Same God of us all. Have a wonderful rest of the evening. In Jesus' name. Thank you for joining. Share, 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 share.
in Jesus. God bless you, Brother Plummer, and all your friends. God bless you. And all my brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name.